In section 8.2, we need to do with this factorial notation and with this notation NCR or NR in brackets that like that written like a vector. Now, what this is, is that we have this fact that NCR, which is also written as NR like a vector, is pronounced N choose R. And that number is uh, the number where, if you imagine we've got n things in a row, so let's say I was looking at 10 choose 3, I've got 10 things in a row, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and you need to pick three of those things. Uh, so say this one, this one, and this one, okay? So that would be my choice, those three. And the question is, how many ways are there of picking three things out of this list of 10? Okay, that's, that is notated by the number NCR, N choose three, or NR, which we still pronounce N choose three. Now, <clears throat> that is uh, given by the formula that they give you in the book on page 161, and we're going to use it for the binomial expansion because, uh, and we'll get on to how to calculate this number N choose R uh, soon, but let's imagine we've got a load of brackets all times together and they've each got an A and a B in them, A plus B, A plus B. So you can perhaps see, let's say I want an A to the power of um, N, uh, the term which has got A to the power of N in it. Well, that is going to have B to the power of N minus, um, sorry, if, if there are N brackets, if I want A to the power of R, then I needed to have picked an A from R of these brackets, right? So that means that I picked a B from the rest of them, so that's N minus R. And then I need to know, well, that how many ways were there <coughs> of picking that many A's and that many B's? Well, how many ways are there? There are N choose R, because I picked an A out of R of the brackets. So that's where this number, N choose R, and the binomial expansion sort of meet, and that's why we're going to need to get to know this number. Now this exercise in section 8.2 is just about getting to know this number, getting to understand the factorial notation and so on. Now as it happens we are going to need this as well in the statistics course and in the year one statistics there is a thing called the binomial distribution and I've already done the videos on that and one of them, <coughs> what I did in there and is similar to what I've done here is I've talked about needing this number and how we need it for binomial, uh, for binomial um, probabilities and I've then gone through a video and explained just about this formula and how to calculate uh, things like 10 choose 3. So it is the binomial distribution um, and I think at the moment it's video number 17 in the year one stats. I will put a link in the description of this video. Okay so um, by video number 17 of the year one stats, and I think it's binomial distribution part four or something like that, part three or four. Um, and that video, don't worry if you're not wanting to learn the stats bit of it yet, or if you haven't learned the stats bits yet, uh, that video specifically is just explaining this notation. So rather than me do it twice, I'll just refer you to that video there. Um, so, as it says here, the number of ways of using R items from a group of N items is N choose R. Now that happens to be the same thing as the rows and columns in Pascal's triangle. But as I said in the first video, I wouldn't worry about the way we're labeling these as N minus R and, and you know, R minus one. After this exercise, you're not gonna to have to worry about the link between 20 choose 17 and Pascal's triangle rows, um, you know, is it row 19 or row 21? Because I know we have to take one off or add one on or something. The, the numbers in here aren't quite the same as the, num the rows and columns in Pascal's triangle. We're not gonna worry about that. Um, as it happens, these numbers are the same numbers in Pascal's triangle. That's why in the first half of this exercise, we could use Pascal's triangle to help us. Um, have a look at exercise 8b, get used to the way the notation works, and then we'll look at section 8.3 in the next video.